Did it make you nervous that you didn't, didn't really perform like you wanted to your, your first year on the Ben Hogan Tour? Oh, it, I was miserable because I thought, you know, coming off the first couple of years of playing mini tour golf, I was kind of a hot shot and mm -hmm. I could get it done. And now I'm at a, another level. Um, you know, it's a collaboration of a lot of people that I remembered from college and stuff. So it's it's kind of the cream of the crop right below the PGA Tour. For sure. So, you know, whether my game wasn't ready or I didn't have the sophistication in my game or the experience, I'm not really sure. I can't really, I just was not performing very well and it scared me too. So about three quarters of the way through the season, we got to the end of the summer and I knew I was like, you know, I was married, we were running out of money, um, I needed some support, so I came back home. Some of my dad's friends at Eugene Country Club got together and, and got me through that season. I didn't need much money, but I needed a little. Mm -hmm. um, and then that fall, I spent the remainder, probably starting in October through Christmas, getting contracts together, presenting them to you know influential people that had some resources to see if they would be interested in supporting my effort the second year on the Ben Hogan tour. Okay. Because I'd gotten, so I fail, I have to go back to tour school, but I, I play reasonably well. I don't get my PGA Tour card, but I get far enough in that to get conditional status on the Ben Hogan tour. Okay. What does conditional mean back then? Every, it was pretty vague. So we're not, am I going to get a start? Am I going to get a multiple starts? We're not really sure it, until the season gets near. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't know about professional golf is how big of a commitment it is to raise money to, you know, have some have some time um, to give yourself some time to a few years to go out there and travel and, and do it without worrying about, um, you know, paying the bills. Yeah, and I was no different than everybody. I mean, um, nobody likes to ask for money and it's probably not a great investment anyway. <laughs> investing in, in a golfer that's got the dreams of playing the PGA Tour. Um, but it is a necessary evil. I mean, it's, you really need a few years of comfort. And that actually provided me. I was really good. I was making, I was making enough money to pay my bills up yeah. to that certain point. But still, it was still stressful. Yeah. Because you, a few weeks of playing poorly and you're, you're out of money. Yeah. yeah was, it, was, it, was it stressful, like, borrowing people's money and you know, wanting to hopefully pay them back at some point? Well, this is, this is where I think you'll really enjoy this story. So I work really hard in the fall. Yeah. And I'm going to all the prominent people in Eugene and, you know, whether I can get a meeting with them or not. Um, you know, some of it was embarrassing. Some of it was like, okay, you just got to, you got to just, you just got to do this for yourself and your family and your, your, your journey with golf. So I get, I get, pretty close to the season starting and there's been a lot of promises but nobody there's no there's no nobody's writing a check nobody there's no money in the account yeah and I, i'm scared but and i know that i'm going to be pretty close to getting into the first event which is san antonio okay so cordy jensen one of my dad's dearest friend and one of my dearest friends i call him and said hey you know i've been working pretty hard on this for a couple months um there's there's a lot of promissory notes out there but i really need some money to get on the road because I might get in the first or second tournament, but either way, at least I'll be in the vicinity so I can just, you know, run over there if I, if I get in the tournament. Yeah. So Cordy was such a genuine, generous, sincere, loyal friend. He's always been in the restaurant business and restaurant guys carry a lot of cash in their pockets. So he just pulls out <laughs> and he hands me 10 $100 bills. Okay. And he goes, get your stuff in your car and get on the road. <laughs> and I go, got it. So I go back, I pack everything you can imagine in my car. Cause it's gonna, I'm gonna be gone for a year. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna start cause it usually starts on kind of the, this one's, we're gonna start in Texas and then we're gonna work south and then mm -hmm. go up basically east coast, back across the Midwest and we'll probably end up, and we might end up in like Boise or something to finish the season. Yeah. So I head out. And I get, I don't know, I, I can't remember. I'm going down through Nevada, and I stop at some gas station casino place for lunch. Okay. Sit up there, have a little lunch, get back in my car. A couple, oh, probably three hours down the road. Maybe a couple hundred miles. Yeah. I, I pull in for gas. <laughs> and I'm, like, kind of fumbling, and I'm looking for my wallet, and it's got to be here. And then I start to get that nervous, and you know where you get, like, 
you get that flush and you get hot <laughs> yeah. and you're sweating. And I've got half of Golf Galaxy out in the middle of this gas station you looking for my wallet. I can't find it. But I did have I did have the receipt. Now remember, it's a it's a wallet with credit cards. Well, maybe two credit cards, maybe a gas credit card and some uh -huh. cash. And, and I don't, a thousand dollars. The thousand dollars. It's not with me. So I call. They have the money and the wallet at oh, the wow. little restaurant that I stopped in 200 miles back up the road. Oh, wow. So I call Kathy and Kathy goes, oh, of course, this is just like you. How can you do this? Okay, let's see. Grandma Minnie lives in Kingman, Arizona. Let me give her a call. Maybe you can stay there tonight. She, you, she'll give you a little cash. You can write a check. She just won't, can't. So anyways, long story short, I end up at Grandma Minnie's place. <laughs> I spend the night, she gives me a couple hundred bucks to get down to San, well, it's actually Corpus Christi, Texas. So uh -huh. I've got a long ways to go. And you don't even know if you're in the tournament. No, at in this the meantime, point, right? I'm asking, first I started at like fifth alternate when I left okay. Eugene. I probably left on like Sunday. Yeah. I have to be there by Thursday. It's okay. a ways to go. Yeah. It's probably Tuesday morning. I wake up at Grandma Minnie's house. Okay. And I've got a long ways to go. Yeah. And, and, and periodically I would call PGA Tour headquarters and I'd go, okay, is and my first, second, fifth alternate, and they go, you're third today. Fantastic. I'm getting closer. Uh -huh. Okay, so then the next day, I, I'm traveling down through just north of Phoenix. And guess what? I'm going a little too fast, and I get pulled over by a policeman. And you don't have a, you don't have a driver's license. I have nothing. Except that my, my, I look like I just stole half <laughs> of a pro shop. <laughs> yeah. I've got clubs and balls and you name it, golf gear wise. Anyway, long story, he let me go. He says, I just wouldn't get pulled over in Texas. Those guys aren't as nice as the people in Arizona. I go, I got it. So not only did I have a long ways to go, I kind of had to keep. Got to go to the speed limit. I had to go to the speed limit. <laughs> so I get down there. I get down to Corpus Christi. It's the first event on the Ben Hogan tour at about 3 in the afternoon. Now, each stop, I would stay with a host family. That was a good um, savings for me um, and met some wonderful people over the years so i get my host family i hit a few putts i don't see the golf course um everything's fine i tee off at nine o'clock in the morning the next day or whatever but i'm i'm half delirious from this whole <laughs> four-day adventure so you don't even from, play a practice round no no and i'm in portland texas now remember there's probably a little bit to know about this golf course different grass oh yeah it's on the gulf of mexico it's going to be giant winds, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I'm just glad. And I got in the tournament. You know, I found out probably Wednesday morning. You know, I'd been first alternate. Now you're in the tournament. So you're excited. You're excited to tee it up. I'm excited to tee it up. But I have no thoughts of winning a tournament, playing good, nothing. Just I'm going to get the year started. Yeah. 72nd hole, I've got a one-shot lead. <laughs> it's a par five. <laughs> I hit. I remember it like it was yesterday. First of all, I'm just like, I just can't believe that I've come this far, gone through all this, and now I've got a one-shot lead. My second year on the Ben Hogan Tour and the first event first of the event year. First event of the year, yeah. So it's a par five, island green. I lay up. I hit what I think is a perfect wedge shot. It's a pretty windy day, too. Lands right by the hole, takes one hop in the water over the green. I'm oh, like, no. Oh, yeah. It's just like, you, no, you didn't just do that. <laughs> Fortunately, it, the, the hazard line was right up on the green, so uh -huh. I didn't have to like redrop drop and go over. I basically was putting the ball from the fringe. Okay. So I two putted for bogey. Okay. Playoff. Playoff with Bob Burns, who played the PGA Tour as well. I hit it a foot on the first hole and won the tournament. Twenty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> wow! What a story! What an experience! Oh yeah, I mean, you think about the certain things that happened to me. You know, I, you can call it like fate or karma or coincidence and i'm not really sure what you call all these things but i was supposed to go play the pga tour at some point yeah i don't know why but i never really you know back to what we talked about before that wasn't the goal the goal was the experience and be able to like pull things off under pretty stressful circumstances like that i won the tournament all i I let all the guys back at home get in, get into the the little group, and suddenly the money started flying in. And I had <laughs> my sponsors, and I was on a roll. I so in a short amount of time, I won three events on the the Ben Hogan tour that year and got my tour card. 
yeah, so that that whole experience kind of catapulted you um, and freed you up to win some more. Yeah, it was. I just think back to that one experience, though. That that was the one. That's the one that gave me some more evidence that I had it in my heart. Um, I did it soon after that, and I did it again. So you know, again, I had I, I had a natural ability to kind of win golf tournaments, even when I wasn't feeling great, or I'd traveled yeah. three thousand miles to play an event with. Yeah, and, you're, and your back's up money. against the wall, and yeah. you can perform. Yeah. So. So that those three wins got you your PGA Tour card. Were you 